On a summer's day, the road to the sea was jammed with traffic. Beep, beep, honk, honk, went the car horns. Everyone was getting impatient. Honk, honk, went another horn. There is only one horn like that, an Austin Heavy 12-4. It was Gumdrop. Honk, honk. Mr Oldcastle, Gumdrop's owner, honked again. He was getting impatient too. Woof, woof, so was his dog, Horace. Who was holding up the traffic? Why the Bumblebee family? Their car was always breaking down. The car won't go, complained Mr Bumblebee. Our holiday is ruined, wailed Mrs Bumblebee. The children moaned and demanded ice cream. Mr Oldcastle recognised his neighbours and offered to help. He hitched the battered car to Gumdrop and towed them to a garage. Gumdrop struggled under the load. His engine went brrrm, clang, brrrm, clang. Mr Oldcastle did not like the clangs. Probably the big end's going, said the garage man. Not surprising in such an old car. Mr Oldcastle didn't like that, but as they all wanted to get to the sea in time, they all squeezed into Gumdrop to continue their journey. On the way, Gumdrop had to climb a steep hill. Brrm, clangety, brrm, clang, 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 went the engine. The bumblebees were too heavy. The big end's going, said Mr Bumblebee. Oh, how frightful, cried Mrs Bumblebee. We want ice cream, wailed the children. Woof, woof, went Horace. Mr Oldcastle did not like those clangety clangs one bit. At last they arrived. Even Gumdrop sounded happy. Brrrm, brrrm, went his engine as if nothing had happened. But just as they parked, the engine made the most terrible noises. It clanged and clattered, and in a cloud of smoke and an almighty bang, it stopped. Oh, my goodness, exclaimed Mr Oldcastle. Oil was everywhere, and there was a big hole in the crankcase. Oh, dear, said Mr Bumblebee. You won't be able to repair that. Mr Oldcastle knew that Gumdrop would need a new engine, but where would he find another 1926 Austin 12-4 engine? For the moment, there was nothing to be done, and as the Bumblebees were impatient to go for a sale, Mr Oldcastle decided to go too. Poor Gumdrop was left on the shore. They hired an old fishing boat. All aboard, called Captain Bumblebee, and off they went. Mrs Bumblebee sunbathed, the children ate ice cream, Horace tried to fish, everyone was happy, except Mr Oldcastle. The wind was getting stronger. Mr Bumblebee turned his telescope to the shore. Look, the tide's going in. The water's nearly got up to Gumdrop. We must turn back at once, or Gumdrop will be washed out to sea, cried Mr Oldcastle. But just then, Horace saw a fish, grabbed at it, lost his balance, and splash! Mr Oldcastle plunged in to rescue him. Mr Bumblebee leant over to help, as did all the other Bumblebees. The boat tilted and splash! They all fell in. Mayday! Mayday! boomed Mr Bumblebee. Help! Help! called Mrs Bumblebee. Ice cream! Ice cream! spluttered the children. Soon other boats sailed up to rescue them. Then Mr Oldcastle remembered Gumdrop. Hurry! he cried. Hurry! Or my car will be washed out to sea. The water was already up to Gumdrop's mudguards. Shoulders to the wheel! commanded Mr Bumblebee. Everybody pushed and heaved and at last Gumdrop was back on dry land. Then Mr Oldcastle remembered. My dog! Where's my dog? Poor old Mr Oldcastle. His car had blown up, then was nearly washed away, he was nearly drowned, and now his dog was missing. Just then, their fishing boat came in on the tide. Mr Oldcastle heard a muffled bark. Woof! Woof! It came from the engine cover. Mr Oldcastle jumped on board and tore it off. There was Horace, safe and sound. Then he looked at the engine. It was exactly like gumdrops. Good old Horace. The fisherman who owned the boat was happy to sell Mr Oldcastle the engine. I'd rather have a modern diesel for my boat, he said. So all was well. Whilst the engine was overhauled, Mr Oldcastle joined the others on holiday. He bought lots of ice creams for the children, and Horace caught lots of fish. And now Gumdrop has a sparkling new engine. What's more, Mr Oldcastle is determined to keep his car firmly on dry land.